So, let us get started with the third topic in this course on GPU architectures and programming. Now, we are to introduce the notions of CUDA programming language, one of the most popularly used GPU programming languages. So, what is CUDA? The full form first of all is Compute Unified Device Architecture. So, CUDA is essentially an extension of C programming language with special constructs that support parallel programming. Now, this is a programming language extension developed by NVIDIA primarily for their GPUs. Now, as we know that NVIDIA GPUs are very popularly used as accelerating uh, devices in conjunction with I mean high performance CPUs. So, for the CUDA programmer, the perspective is that the CPU is a host. That means, in CPU, you have an orchestrator program which is running and it is dispatching parallel jobs to GPU devices. Well, there may be more than one GPU device attached with a CPU. So, generally it can dispatch multiple parallel jobs to these GPU devices. These jobs will execute on the devices and get back results to the host. So, the way a basic CUDA program is structured is as follows. So, there is a host code which is resident that means, it is executing on a host device that is the CPU and there is a part that we call the device code which is supposed to execute on the GPUs. Technically speaking, any C program is a valid CUDA host code. Essentially, it is a code that can execute in a CPU. So, in general, CUDA programs constitute of this host plus device code and they cannot be com compiled by any standard C compiler and for this purpose, we require this specific compiler from NVIDIA that is the NVCC compiler, that is NV NVIDIA C compiler. The compilation flow for NVIDIA C compiler is as follows that you write the CUDA program essentially a C program with CUDA extensions, you compile it with NVCC, what you get is the host code and the device code that is the part of the code which will be compiled further by the host C compiler and linker and the device code will be JIT compiled for the for execution on the device. So, overall these are the two different segments on code that you get one to execute on the CPU and the other to execute on the GPU devices. The execution flow is as follows in the host code is the code that is executing in the CPU serially. The host code will launch the device code that is the GPU parallel kernel. The GPU, the parallel kernel will execute in the GPU. This is, called, this is what we have been referring to as the device code. It will return results to the host code. With those results, the host code may again execute, do some functionality and then again launch some parallel kernels for the GPU devices and this computation can go on back and forth. I can have a simple CUDA program which will launch one kernel for a GPU device, get back the result and print me the result or I can have a sufficiently complex program which will launch some kernel, get some result, do some processing in the CPU, then again launch another kernel so on and so forth. So, before discussing our first CUDA program, let us start with an example vector addition code that is executing in a CPU, a very simple C program. So, you have a main, you have a main in which you have this float types defined. So, these are pointers to floating point arrays which I mean which you dynamically allocate with the malloc calls. Now, once this dynamically allocation is done, you call this vector add function inside this vector add function of course i am just trying to show an example we have not we have not written any code for initialization of the arrays and all that assume those are there so once that is done the vec add will be called and after vec add is called inside a loop i am just trying to add the two vectors and return the result in the in the in the hc h underscore c array so in that way 
this vcat with three of its arguments. The first two are kind of the input arguments and h underscore c is a dynamically allo allocated array which will contain the output argument. Of course, the initialization code is missing here as discussed earlier. So, this is how a typical vector addition will execute in a CPU. How will it work on a CPU GPU system? So, here comes your first CUDA program. First of all, you observe the hash includes that we have. Well, we have a hash include CUDA.h and also we have a hash include of CUDA underscore runtime dot h. These are the header files which contain the required CUDA functionalities that we will be using in our code. In this first CUDA program, as we have discussed earlier, there will be a piece of code that will execute in the CPU. It will launch the parallel code or the device code for the GPU. This is what we call the kernel. Now, what is the code that will execute in the CPU? So, that is essentially this VEC add program. This is the program that uh, that is commented as a host program. As you can see, this is similar to our earlier CPU only VEC add program. So, essentially this is a program that is called from main. It is expecting to be passed three pointers, right. So, these pointers are containing base addresses for three arrays which have been dynamically allocated before the call has been made and also suitably initialized at least the input arrays and they are added as vectors and the output array is written. That was my original vcat code. Here I can have the vcat code which is the CPU side host program. Similar input arguments are there. Now, what we are trying to do here is we do not want the addition to be done in the CPU this host code is supposed to launch something called a GPU kernel that is the part that that is a code that will be executed in the GPU right. So, let us see how it is done. So, we will just walk through this program step by step. First thing we will do is inside this host program vcad we declare some pointers and then we also declare a specific enumerated data type CUDA error underscore t and we initialize it with one of the types that is CUDA success. So, this is the error code to check return values from CUDA calls. Now, these are all defined in the header files that we have defined earlier. These are not our own designs, they are already defined. Now, coming to the code, the first thing we are trying to do is just like we do malloc for dynamically allocating memory in a CPU, we fire a function CUDA malloc. Now, again these are all defined in the CUDA runtime like the, the, CUDA, the CUDA headers and uh, what CUDA malloc will do is it will allocate memory not on the CPU's side, but rather the memory resident on the GPU device. It will allocate a specific amount of memory of size equal to this size and return a pointer for that and this is the pointer d underscore a. So, as you can see we got we, we have already declared this d underscore a. So, now after this CUDA malloc call d underscore a address is containing a generic pointer and it is pointing to an amount of a size amount of memory resident on the GPU device. In case this malloc call is not going perfectly, then this next if condition will not be satisfied. So, error will not be equal to CUDA success. Again, CUDA success is again another enumerated data type which should match provided the malloc call goes perfectly fine. If it is not so, then this condition will fire and we will have a, a printf standard error where this message will be printed with a suitable error code. Now, how is the error code coming in? The error code that what is the reason can be figured out by this directive CUDA get error string. So, CUDA get error string will take as argument this error of type CUDA error underscore t and from that 
error code it will figure out the suitable error string which will be present which can be printed here using the fprintf command. Again I am assuming that you are very much conversant with fprintf printing strings to standard error and everything. So, please get acquainted with it if you have kind of forgotten all that. So, and henceforth an exit will happen with a suitable code. So, following this schema we will do memory allocation for the other pointers that is db as well as dc. So, as we can understand there is a difference between the original pointers that have been passed to the vcad host program these were h a h b and h c. So, they point to memory locations on the CPU memory, they point to resident arrays on the memory location which have been dynamically allocated and initialized before the call has been made to vcad. Internally vcad defines more pointers and make the CUDA malloc call. So, and assign them assign these generic pointers so that they can point to memory locations not on the CPU side, but on the GPU side. We will soon see why this is necessary. So, as you can see in this slide we have a kind of repetitive code of CUDA malloc DA, DB and DC and in case of error suitable error commands will trigger as has been written down here. Following this we have this printf statement which is saying that copy input data from the host memory to the CUDA device. So, if this is printed that means all the previous malloc operations went fine. So, we have three locations in the memory of size equal to size allocated on the GPU memory side and they are being pointed to by D A, D B and D C. So, the next thing that I need to do is I need to copy the input arrays from the host side memory to the device side memory from the CPU memory to the GPU memory right. Because essentially I want to do the vector addition on the GPU in parallel not on the CPU that is the basic idea of this program which is vector addition on a CPU GPU system. So, now for doing this transfer of data from the host side to the device side we have this command CUDA mem copy. So, what it does? So, this is the device side memory D A, this is the host side memory H A. So, there is a copy from H A to D A, the copy's size is dictated by this parameter size and the type of copy is CUDA mem copy host to device. Following this directive all the data resident in H A up to size amount of space get serially copied to the location pointed to by D A in the GPU side memory fine. Now, in case this is again not successful suitable error comments will get printed as has been already discussed. So, similarly we also do a CUDA mem copy for the array H B to the device array D B. Once both of these things get done as you can see that the codes are again kind of similar. Once both these operations get done we have the two input arrays containing the two input vectors ready for addition in the GPU side memory. At this point we are thinking of launching a program on the GPU which will access this array locations in the GPU side memory do the addition and store the result and transfer that result back to the CPU side memory. For doing that we declare certain suitable parameters known as threads per block and blocks per grid and we pass these parameters to a function called vector add. Now, as you can see the definition the, the, the call of this function is very different from our standard C functions because apart from its arguments being this uh, D A, D B, D C and N there is something here called blocks per grid and threads per block. Now, what this is we will discuss 
a bit later on. For the time being just think that this is a specific type of function with some extra parameters. Essentially this is how we are launching program for the GPU. We are going to launch a function in the GPU which will do the computation of vector addition in parallel. This kind of function which does computation on the GPU side is traditionally known as a kernel, a GPU kernel. GPU kernel launches follow this kind of parameter iterization. Now the parameter definitions is something we will speak a bit later on. Now just observe that the function has been apart from these threads per block and blocks per grid parameters it has also been passed the div GPU device memory locations DA, DB and DC. A and B are containing the two arrays which are or the, uh, A, and, A and B are essentially pointing to the vectors which are to be added and the result is supposed to be stored in DC all of them are in device memory. Now let us look at the implementation of this kernel which is right here. So this is how a CUDA kernel can be defined. So first we have the declaration of vector add and then we have the actual definition of vector add. So inside vector add we have a computation of an index that decides what is the path thread behavior and then we have the familiar code of the location C getting the value for AI plus BI. So CI is being written with AI plus BI. Now the difference with the CPU side is here if the GPU has got n number of cores inside it n number of scalar processors that many number of threads will be launched which will do all these additions in parallel and in that way all these vector additions will happen in parallel. How exactly is something which we will discuss. So coming back here so this was the call for vector add at this point. So with this vector add call we land up here this addition is done now going, going back here to this vector at call we expect that DC this device memory location contains the added vector value right. Now something important to be noted here is this is a function which is executing on the GPU side for such a function it can take as operands values from memory that is the GPU memory and write back values again on the GPU memory. So they do not return anything. So that is what we are saying the device function the CUDA kernel called from the host side does not have a return type here. Now this is unlike CUDA runtime directives like CUDA mem copy or uh, CUDA malloc which can return an error code. This function cannot have a return type, but in case this function ran into some issues while executing, it will create a signature which can be caught by CUDA get last error. This is again a runtime function, this is a function which is a feature of the CUDA runtime system. So the point I am trying to make here, here is that vector add does not itself directly provide a return, but rather in case there was some issue in executing the function this runtime function CUDA get last error can provide or return the suitable error and if that is not of type CUDA success again we have a way to know that the launch of this vector at kernel got into some issues. Okay. Now so we have the vector addition done and the result is there in the device memory HC which can be copied back again by CUDA mem copy directive to the CPU side or host side memory HC. Now observe that earlier when we copied the values from host side to device side the directive inside CUDA mem copy was CUDA mem copy host to device. But now when we copy from device side to host side it is CUDA mem copy device to host. So that is a slight alteration. So with this directive we have the result back in the CPU. Now once I have the result back in the CPU I can deallocate all the allocations that we have performed on the device side memory that is 
we can free up this d a d b and d c using the CUDA free directive. So, essentially it is very much C like with some CUDA annotation. And then we have we have just written some small checking code which, are, which, which is just checking whether the absolute value of the sum of a plus b subtracted from c is within an error bound or not. Otherwise, we will say that okay, there has been some issue right and, and then we do a test pass printf. So, if this code has to be compiled, so we have to fire this kind of a command, we run the NVCC compiler with the kernel definition in kernel.cu, the host site code in host.cu, we compile them to create the binary output. If you run it, you get this sequence of print statements firing and this should be the output that we expect. Okay. Now, coming back to how really the execution is going on. So, as we know that the GPU is a separate card, it is an accelerator card which is kind of getting attached to the CPU and uh, the GPU has got its own device memory. For doing the computation in the GPU, from the last example we could figure out that suitable data points need to be transferred by the CPU to the GPU device memory. Then the kernel is launched, the GPU kernel is suitably launched by the host program. The GPU kernel executes on the GPU with input parameters taken from the device memory of the GPU, it writes data back on the device memory of the GPU which has to be again copied back from the to the CPU. So, this is the overall execution flow in a bit more detail. This header file CUDA.h includes the compilation CUDA API functions and the different CUDA system variables, the ones that we have been exhibiting with some examples inside the code. And, uh, this uh, as we have also seen that there were the host code was using variables that were mapped in the main memory of the CPU, whereas the device code were I mean before executing the device code we needed to initialize pointers and allocate them suitable memory in the GPU's DRAM or the device memory. A few more observations, so we have been using this run functions supported by the CUDA runtime. So, there is a CUDA malloc. Now, what was exactly it doing? It was allocating memory segment from the GPU's global memory, which is physically different from the CPU's global memory. Now, this expects a generic pointer whose type is void star star, it is a generic pointer, it can point to any kind of data here. Now, this low level function is common for all object types, that is the reason why it is a generic pointer. Now, the other thing is the CUDA memcopy command as we have discussed earlier, it transfers data back and forth between CPU and GPU. If it is uh, having the directive CUDA memcopy host to device, so it is a copy from CPU to the GPU. If it is CUDA memcopy device to host, then it is a copy from the GPU memory to the CPU memory. The important thing is this device memory pointers DA, once the CUDA malloc is done with DA, this device memory pointer cannot be dereferenced in the host code, simply for the reason that they are pointing to a different physical location that is the GPU memory. So, they can be dereferenced only inside the kernel code. So, with respect to CUDA memcopy, we can have this kind of CUDA memcopy from device to host, host to device and uh, just like uh, the transfer of data being supported among GPUs and CPUs with CUDA memcopy, we can also do a transfer among different device memory locations. So, even if I have two different device memory locations on the same device, I can do a CUDA memcopy device to device using the uh, that kind of a directive. Also, we can do a transfer from data from host to host, but we do not need to do that right, because it is inside a normal CPU. So, that is just a normal movement of data inside two different locations in the array. But I cannot transfer data among different GPU devices using a CUDA memcopy directive and it is very, uh, very easy to understand right, because 
what what are the things that we can really do to just to summarize i can copy data from host side memory to device side memory or from device side memory to host side memory i can copy data between two different locations in the same device memory i can copy data between two different memory locations in the same host side memory although that's not required because it's inside a cpu's dram but what i cannot do is i cannot have cuda mem copy copying data from one gpu device's memory to another gpu device's memory because in that case they are two again two different physical devices and cuda mem copy supports tra only transfer between one host and one gpu so in that case i have to copy data from device 1 to the host and then i have to copy from the host to the device 2 now coming back to the call of a cuda kernel how a cuda kernel is called so when a cuda kernel is invoked it launches multiple threads in a two level hierarchy the threads are the basic compute units which engage the scalar processors and the gpu each scalar processor will execute one thread all the scalar processors execute threads in parallel now going back to our example cuda kernel as we have discussed earlier that uh, when this vector at kernel was launched there were two parameters blocks per grid and threads per block so let's now try to understand the significance of these parameters so as we have already discussed that we are trying to do computation using multiple computing threads in a gpu that's the fundamental thing so when i'm doing vector addition i launch i want to launch a lot of compute threads all of them will add components of the vector in parallel now this arrangement of multiple threads follow a two level hierarchy so suppose i am trying to launch n number of threads so what i can do is i can define their arrangement in two levels at the higher level i say that okay i have n by 256 ceiling number of elements and then at the lower level i say that each element comprises 256 threads so in total i have n number of threads being launched so this call specifies a grid of threads to be launched so that's a technical term people use that you launch a grid of threads the grid is arranged in a hierarchical manner you have a number of blocks so the first component here in the hierarchy is the number of blocks so you have n by 256 number of blocks and then you say that each block contains 256 number of threads that's the second parameter so overall i have number of blocks and number of threads per block that's the specification which tells me that how many threads are launched now if we go back to the definition of the vector at kernel so we had threads per block defined as 256 and then we defined the number of blocks per grid or just the number of blocks which was just n plus threads per block minus 1 divided by threads per block so essentially we are looking at total n number of threads here so you are if you, if this print statement will fire it will tell me how many threads are there per block and how many blocks have been launched so essentially here we have the vector at being launched with the number of blocks in the grid comma number of threads inside each block so of course since i have a definition of threads per block that also means that all blocks contain same number of threads maximum 1024 now i can even have a hierarchical specification of blocks that means i can number the blocks in three dimensions using triplets we'll discuss this later on so how are really blocks arranged so when a cuda kernel is launched i have this hierarchical arrangement of threads and suppose i have n number of blocks and each block is containing this 256 threads 